Welcome to Good Libations, our show about mixology. I'm Ethel Andrews, a resident mixologist, you might say, and we're going to go a totally different direction from the other cocktails that I have made recently because the last two involve scotch and bourbon, two traditional, you might say, dark liquors. This next drink is more along the lines of a frivolous, party, kind of fun type of a cocktail drink. In fact, it could be classified as a tropical drink, but not quite, because it does not incorporate lime and um, other fresh fruits that I usually put in tropical drinks. It does incorporate rum, but it kind of goes a different direction. And I call this particular cocktail the ladies' night, because back in the day when this was permissible and legality didn't get in the way, there used to be a ladies' night once a week at dance venues or cocktail lounges where women got in for half price or for free, which was really nice because women's wages have never been equitable as far as men's wages. But now they've abolished that because they consider that a form of reverse discrimination, which I can see in a way. But it kind of took all the fun out of the term ladies' night. But anyway, this is girls' night out cocktail. And it's the sort of drink that people stereotypically think that women exclusively like and that it's kind of a fruity, could be described as a sweet drink, but I've toned it down so that it doesn't have that sickly sweet edge that too many of these cocktails have. And it is a tropical drink. And again, according to some sources who like to, you might say, dictate rules about how drinks should be made, this is the sort of drink that they claim that when you're using your chimney glass or your hurricane style um, tropical drink glass that you should mix the drink and that you should not shake it or put it in a shaker. And I don't shake the drink in a shaker, but I utilize the shaker as a way of putting the ingredients in and kind of flipping the shaker over and then pouring them out ice and all into the glass. Because to me, it means that the ingredients are uniformly distributed. Now, in some, cocked, in some tropical drinks or, or cocktails, that is not what you want. You do sort of want a layered effect where you're drinking through the layers and where the layers blend and it becomes slightly different with each sip. But that's not really the case with this drink. We want a certain uniformity with it contrary to what those who consider themselves purists want. And no, it will not hurt the molecules of the drink or damage the character of it or anything like that. And I know I'm being a bit sarcastic, but again, I find it funny when people try to make rules about things like that. Um, things like that should be a guidepost. They shouldn't be a hitching post. So... That's how I tend to look at things. If we can do things that are going to improve something and make it suit people's palates better or our palate better, by all means we should do so without making rules. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and set about making this drink and I am going to utilize, as I mentioned, the cocktail shaker, but not for shaking purposes. And I'm going to go ahead and put ice in the shaker because I want the... Um, liquors that are used in it to cool down properly. And then I'm going to add ice to the glass so that I can pour it in the, in the glassware. And hopefully I won't make a, a mess with ice all over the table, hopefully. Close to it, because it's not really fitting, but once it's poured in there it will and anyway, this particular drink incorporates rum as one of its ingredients, so we're going to go ahead and put that in. And this is a very modest brand of rum. And this also involves the use of a bit of coconut rum as well, but not too much. Because again, we don't want this to be a sickly sweet drink. This is the sweet, fruity variety of drink, but not sickly sweet. So we'll just put some in, but not an outrageous quantity of it. Just enough to give it a good coconut flavor. 
And the next ingredient that we're going to put in here is peach infusion. Now, you could put peach liqueur in here, but again, if you do that, you're going to get a sweet drink. Peach infusion adds the flavor of peach, but not the sickly sweetness, which we want to avoid. So we'll put a bit of that in to get some peach flavor in there. And then we're going to add a bit of pineapple juice. Yeah, this is a nice cocktail that men and women both enjoy. And I might add more in to the finished product. And I'm going to add a little bit of maraschino juice in this drink. And you could actually add maraschino liqueur, which is a whole different product entirely, but I just added the juice. And then we're going to cut into an orange. And we're going to squeeze in some fresh orange juice into it and get that oil from the peel. Not too much orange juice, though. And we're going to cut a little tiny garnish to put on it as well. And then we're going to add some raspberry, cranberry, actually sparkling juice in this drink, which actually goes off very well in this particular cocktail. Now I'm going to go ahead and basically just turn the shaker over, you might say. And I could have, again, mixed this entirely within the glass. That would have been the way that certain people think that I should make it. But I'm just using this as a medium to blend the ingredients together evenly, which is how I think it should be done in this particular drink. And now I'm going to have to hope that I can get the, t the top off. There we go. Had to dry off my hands a bit. And I'm going to add the little garnish to it. And in addition to that, I'm going to add a maraschino cherry to kind of set the, the drink off a bit, make it look attractive. And you can just imagine the good old days when Ladies, well, ladies still get together and have their little ladies' night gatherings and stuff, but when we used to get into different establishments at half price or free, this reminds me of the good old days, and I'm going to taste it to make sure that this drink is worthy of all the hype. Oh, yeah, that is quite nice. And it's not sickly, because it's a, it's a fruity-tasting drink, but... It's not cloyingly sweet and nauseous the way these drinks usually are. And again, that's because the stereotype is that women like sweet cocktails. Not necessarily true. Because, again, the lady who introduced me to the um, doctor's orders drink doesn't like sweet drinks. And that's a very worthy cocktail. But so is this for those who enjoy a fruity tasting drink. They will enjoy this, but those who don't care for sweet drinks can also enjoy this particular cocktail. Ladies' night. Very nice. And again, as I emphasize on all my shows, we live in a community that is actually a well-thought-of community and very diverse, which is one of the things that I've always liked about Monrovia. We have ethnic diversity and all other types of diversity. And because we love our community and we're concerned about everybody being safe, including ourselves, let's drink sensibly, let's be cautious, and let's not overdo because we want to keep this community safe and well spoken of. Thank you again for tuning in to another episode of Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. Thank you again and enjoy. Goodbye.